Ladies and gentlemen, we go from a cast of a thousand <laughs> to a very special solo presentation. I hope you really enjoyed that panel discussion. I think Nick did a great job of comparing, considering we had so many brilliant voices on stage, we easily could have given it an extra hour. There was so much more to delve into. But we want to keep the pace going and high for the rest of today. So now we're going to be looking at a very special presentation, the story of the first UAE-based technology unicorn Yala Group, listed on the New York Stock Exchange, a very illustrious group. And to take us through that journey, we have Saifi Ishmael, the president of Yala Group, based here in the UAE. Please do give him a very warm welcome onto our stage. Thank you. Hello. Hi, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm so glad to be here today, I think after three years of our IPO, presenting our exciting journey of how we drove a small startup to an IPO company and based from Dubai. So three years ago, and during COVID, we rang the bell of New York Stock Exchange market here in Dubai. And this is happening for the first time. They had to ship the actual bill to Dubai and send their representative to celebrate with us our public listing for our company. And that happened on the 30th of September of 2022, of 2020, and in Burj Khalifa. It was a very exciting time that we had all the media attending this event, celebrating with us an IPO for a company that established from Dubai and from Dubai Internet City. And we were so honored that we've been appraised by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, greeting Yalla for their successful IPO from Dubai and from Dubai Internet City, followed by a tweet by His Excellency the Minister Omar Sultan Al Ulama. This exciting time gave us a huge commitment that we've been listed on NYSE as the first UAE based technology unicorn from UAE that give us some pressure that we need to maintain this robust financial and operational performance and keep the growth of the company year over year to show for ourselves, of course, and for the leadership that this company will sustain and will grow more and more. Before I start the story and the journey, let me just share with you a quick story of how the brand name came from. So basically, back in end of 2015, my friend and who's the chairman, CEO, and co-founder of Yalla, he was based in China, and he called me, and I was in Dubai. And he told me his plan to create a platform and to be voice-centric, tailored for MENA users. It sounds amazing when we discuss the idea, especially that we both come from deep experience in the culture of Middle East. We worked together for more than 10 years at that time in Middle East, himself and the founding team. So I immediately supported the idea. I, I endorsed it and I told him I want to be in. Then he turned the question to me, what do you think we should call the app? Then I simply answer, Yalla. And this is where the app name came from. And this is where our all portfolios, brands, app names comes under the name of Yalla. The journey is simple. It might be similar to any startup, but we've been lucky that we understood the culture here very well. 
and we fulfilled a gap which was not exist, creating a community platform that represents the voice of the users in Middle East and communicate and only communicate using voice and not video. And this is where we started our flagship app, Yalla, in 2016. We launched Yalla Life in middle of 2016 on the iOS and Google Play, and we broke even in six months time. That give us confidence that there is a huge potential in this region, and there is acceptance of users of the way of entertainment that we design and we develop for them. It encourages us to develop and enhance the user experience of Yalla Life. In 2018, we introduced the first casual voice-centric game in Middle East called Yalla Ludo. We simply developed the game Ludo, which is very common in Middle East, and we managed to integrate a voice function inside the game where the players can talk, engage, and also we created a voice group chat inside the gameplay. And that was in 2018. Before our IPO, our two flagship apps, Yalla Life and Yalla Ludo, were the most generated revenue under the entertainment and board games in Middle East in iOS and Google Play. And this is what made us confident that this could be a very successful story for the VCs and the investors to understand and believe in our unique business model. And this is what encourages us to go and list our company publicly and in the most oldest market in the world, which is New York Stock Exchange market. Right after our IPO, we expanded our product lines. We introduced more products under the category of the social networking. Also, we enrich our product line under the category of the casual games. And later, in 2022, we introduced mid-core and hardcore games. Those diversities of products and apps that we tailored, it's coming from a strong team who believe in what they do and how they do. And this is our unique recipe that we have a pool of resources mixed between a very talented developers coming from China with a strong product marketing people who understand the local culture of the Middle East and a full operational team work from Dubai. We have now more than 800 staff between China and Dubai and we have more than 300 outsourced staff serving our customer service all over the world. Our Yalla Life app supports eight languages, Arabic, English, Portuguese, Spanish, Ordos, Pakistanis, Indonesian. Later of 2023, we show our robust operational performance and quarter by quarter, we are publicly announced our strong results and numbers. And this give us confidence that we can grow more and more. Now let's dig deeper into the idea from where we thought of creating a voice-centric platform. Simply, it was the transformation and that translation of the actual majlis. We call it majlis in Middle East, where people, they gather offline, they entertain, they visit each other, they play game, socialize, and they gift each other. And this is where idea came from. We intend to develop an online version of the real majlis and plug this online version with instruments that enable the users inside our majlis to act like they are at the real life. They talk with each other, they text each other, they play with each other, they run music, competitions, and of course, they gift each other. And this is what made our business model very unique. We built a platform that is 100% user-generated content, which means we don't hire influencers, 
neither key opinion leaders. All the users in our platform are normal users. They generate the content themselves, and they don't get any benefits, financial benefits out of that, which means we don't cash out money to all the users. Now, this is, of course, increase our net profit margin because it's a complete saving of our operational costs, but at the same time, it enhances our user experience. Why? The users, when they feel that there are other users in the same community, they are making money out of them, they don't feel happy or satisfied. So we maintained a very healthy community inside our platform. They all understand that this platform does not cash out. If I want to virtually gift someone in the room or in the majlis, that means because I appreciate him, I want to deliver a message to him that I respect you and I give you full support. And this is where we monetize our platform, either by the virtual gifts or the subscription from the VIB levels. If we look to our portfolio our, after our flagship app, Yalla, we introduced the second flagship app, Yalla Ludo. And Yalla Ludo right now is the most generated revenue under the board category worldwide. And with that, we introduce more tailored casual games to the region. We introduce a card game to the Saudi market called Yalla Balut. And we integrated, of course, with our voice capability. We introduce a casual games for the Turkish market. And even we reach the Latin America with a casual game called Yalla Barchis. After we feel that we had enough experience of developing casual games, and we gained the experience of expanding and developing more heavy games, we acquired game studios to enable us to develop mid-core and hardcore games. And just this year, we introduced two heavy core games, strategy games, called Yalla Faz'a and Age of Legends. With this expansion of our product's ecosystem, we didn't stop at that stage. We also expanded our social networking portfolio. We introduced two different apps. One called Yalla Chat, which is an instant messaging app tailored for the MENA users. And we plugged this app with features which is not available in other applications and all under one umbrella. We plugged this application with mini games, with some Islamic features like Adhan, Qibla, and Reminders. And also we introduce a new function called the spot, which can accommodate up to 32,000 users inside one majlis, and they can talk and share text, notes, videos, and photos. And from that, we understand that there is demand also for the Muslim content. So we came with the idea of making a clear version of a Muslim content app, which has no advertisement, and we called it Yalla Muslim, which has trusted resources of the Muslim content. The two apps came under the social network networking category. With this portfolio, let's highlight some numbers where we are. We announced last quarter of 2023, we achieved more than 79 million US dollar as per quarter two last year, with a net profit margin more than 42%. And as I explained, this net profit margin comes from our optimization of the cost, and of course, our unique business model. The number of our monthly active users exceeded 34 million monthly active users, and the ratio of the paying users is around 39% of this total monthly active users. This is considered very high compared with our beer in the internet market. And the most important value for us is how many minutes our users stayed in our platform. Our user stays more than five hours in our platform, enjoying the online majlis.
And this is also considered a very high number, of course, according to Frost and Sullivan and other market research. Now, if we look to those numbers and highlights, this is, of course, a result of a strategy comes from a multicultural leadership works closely with a very talented team who understand the culture, the demand of the market, and what is the need. And we believe that there are many untapped opportunities in Middle East which are not fulfilled yet fully, like digital payment, local life services, metaverse, Web 3.0, and even e-commerce. And that's why we are dedicated to build on top of our ecosystem additional functions that, of course, will leverage this untapped opportunities and will offer us a growth opportunity in the near, mid, and long future. With that clear strategy, we have also set a vision. We are, as a citizen corporate, we believe that we have to create more socio-economic value to the, to the region. And this is not only by maintaining our robust financial performances, but by adding and enabling and delivering the people of MENA of better access to the digital life and also supporting the region of expanding the digital transformation. And by this, I just want to confirm that our vision is never changes. We aspire to build the most popular destination for online social networking and activities in MENA. And by the help of the team and our clear plan and the current opportunities here and in the whole Middle East, we believe that we could achieve this. That's the end of our story. Thank you so much. Any question? Question? Big question. Thank you so much.